say good morning, everyone. And uh, first of all, I want to um, thank the organizers for letting me present uh, in, in such venue. So I'm very excited to be here because uh, this presentation is my, a part of my doctorate dissertation. And I'm currently halfway in the writing up part of my PhD program. So any remark, suggestion, criticism is more than welcome. Um, so the aim of this talk is to provide something like a grammar of dating methods. Um, I'm sorry. No. The, in the input for this research came to me from the observation that there are several chronological disputes in our discipline that have been unresolved for more than a century. The Aurignacian disputes, the Late Bronze Age, Early Iron Age transition in Italy, for example, was my um, point of departure. Uh, I wondered whether there was some deeper explanation to that, other than the lacking of data or, uh, the, or, fun, or the lacking of funding or the, the lacking of technologies. Therefore, I developed what I call a semiotic analysis of chronology building, and I did that because I think it might be of help for different purposes. One is assessing competing frameworks, chronological frameworks, um, or maybe like um, conflating them, or in the case it, that's not possible, understanding why they're not co completable, why they diverge, and finally, and maybe most importantly, I think, select a dating strategy when you have to date um, a complex um, a complex archaeological context or historical um, horizon. So first of all, I want to make clear where I stand in terms of theoretical references because I've been often misunderstood. Um, I use an approach to history that is inspired uh, by the Storicismo Assoluto in, in its absolute historicist that was proposed in the 30s by Benedetto Croce and Antonio Gramsci. Basically, the motto of this approach is every history is contemporary history. So meaning that historical research necessarily responds to questions that are postulated in the present and are investigated to present mindsets. On, um, on another side, when I refer to semiotics, I do not mean the semiotic study of the images, nor I mean Bart's theory on me. I refer to Charles Sanders Spears' analysis of the mechanics of scientific knowledge, and as well to Carlo Ginsberg's idea that historical disciplines use an evidential paradigm that, that is close to the one used by hunters following the footprints of their preys. My archaeological references are basically David Clark's analytical archaeology, in particular his scheme representing the process of constructing archaeological knowledge, and Jean-Claude Gardin, in particular the image of the bridge that he uses to convey the structure of archaeological arguments, and the idea um, of reducing textual arguments to formal schematization uh, for a critical appraisal of the logical chain supporting them. So it is important to find, point out here that I do not completely adhere to neither of these two scholars. I just borrowed the concepts that I found useful. So starting from these theoretical and methodological standpoints, I started to test an hypothesis. The hypothesis is that establishing the chronology of a phenomenon, and especially building a chronological framework through the integration of different dating methods, are not purely descriptive tasks, and they may require a certain level of interpretation at certain nodes in the, no in the logical chain. All right. So in order to test my hypothesis, um, first, I try and, under uh, and understand dating methods and chronology building through the evidential paradigm. So following this approach, we can say that our determinations, our chronological dates, let's say, are based on inferences, inferential, which are inferential arguments based on syllogisms. So on inferences and on the encyclopedia. The encyclopedia is the existing collections of data and the provisional interpretations. This in general is a, a, a 
something that can be applied to all archaeological arguments. But it, there are some very clear examples in chronology uh, that would be new artifacts entering an existing typology or new data emerging on a problematic chronological uh, horizon or determination. So one main issue here is that some inferential arguments in archaeology are what Pierce calls abductions. Uh, that means inferential arguments that require some educated guess, some level of creativity in the scientific process. So the classic example of abduction is the following. First premise, this bean is white. Second premise, all the beans in that bag are white. Conclusion, the bean, the single bean, comes from the bag. So the conclusion is a possible but not a, necessar not a necessary result from the premises. And we'll see later that this is often the case why we can provide boundary dates, more often than interval dates, for our uh, target events. Of course, we can provide dates for, like, precise dates for our um, dated events, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, so, at the end of his monograph on analytical archaeology, David Clark looks at competing paradigms in archaeology and tries to arrange those differing, differing positions in one grammar of archaeological practice that is articulated in three layers. It is therefore apparent that if the archaeologist is constructing an organized and ordered body of relationships that we might call archaeological grammar, then that corpus of relations involves not one, but three separate and related grammars, those of archaeological syntactics, archaeological pragmatics, and archaeological semantics. So I borrow these categories from Clark, even though I use them in a rather different way. So the syntax of data meters for me <coughs> is the logical structure of chronological propositions. The semantic level of analysis focuses on the relationship between models used to obtain chronological results and their target system, which is the chunk of reality they represent. Finally, the pragmatics of dating methods is concerned with their use in archaeological historical narratives and their social historical relevance. But let's analyze them more in detail. So, um, one very productive way of describing the logical process behind dating is to use Godin's metaphor of the bridge. So according to Gauzin, every archaeological interpretation can be described as a bridge. The starting point is usually a given set of initial preposition which reflects empirical observation. This is one bank of the river, P0. It could be, for example, a set of phrases describing a burial. The other bank of the river is made of terminal propositions that provide a certain explanation for the selected set of observations. In our case, this could be a terminus postquem for the burial, Pn. The structure that connects the two bands um, is a bridge made of arches, which are inferences, and pillars, the, encyclo the encyclopedia that justifies the inferences. With respect to our burial, suppose that among the great goods there is a bronze belt and that it is analog to a certain type of belts, let's say type 4A, Suano, 1986. And let's say the previous knowledge tells us that the type dates back to the second quarter of the fourth century BC. So an inference can be made that the belt has been produced at the time of its analogs. It is an objective inference. This is a first arch. A second arch this time is, it, is a necessary inference, can be made that the belt was produced before the grave was sealed, therefore providing a terminus postquem for the burial. So this is a very simple example. It, it can be scaled up, of course. Chronological determination, as well as all scientific knowledge, are based on models, which is on representations of selected aspects of reality. Each dating method rely on, on one or more peculiar units which provide the basic entities for analysis. Inside the model, units are connected among themselves and with the variable time, 
according to some hypotheses or theories. Units are the entities at the base of the analysis. It could be artifacts, it could be attributes, or it could be complex conceptual units such as the axial age. More than one kind of unit um, at more than one scale might be useful to investigate one chronological question. So the construction of conceptual unit and the grouping of empirical units as analogs are another place where interpretive elements enter the chronological process. Units are connected among, among themselves and with time through models. Indeed, models can only portray a certain portion of the phenomenon under investigation. Um, to make the example of what Clark would, would have called an iconic model, a section drawing is an iconic model for a certain area of an archaeological excavation. But because models cannot be completely faithful to their target system, they normally point at one or more specific features. In the case of section drawings, the feature relevant to the model are stratigraphic relations, while pollen species, historical sources, and even the absolute age of materials are not usually represented. Inside the models, the connection between some variables and the units, um, so, sorry, inside the models, the connection between some variables of the units and time is established on the base of theories. So I use the term theory to designate the highest possible level of scientific inference. It does not imply a skeptical argument. So they are the rationale that informs causal links inside models. Or to say it with Clark, the existence of a model presuppose, presupposes the existence of an underlying theory, since the model is but one simplified, formalized, and skeletal expression of a theory be tacit or explicit, developed for a particular situation. A careful study of groups of models apparently expressing a common underlying theory for different situations may therefore help us to expose and articulate latent theory. Oh, sorry, it is here worth remembering that most of those theories incorporate some uniformitarian principle and corrections need to be applied for it and of course, radiocarbon, uh, radiocarbonists have uh, found like one of the best m methods to do that. Um, at the second level of analysis, the semantics of chronology building are concerned with the relations between the model and its target system. Two main issues arise at this point, approximation and, so the two issues are the role of approximation and idealizations, and what is commonly called in built age, I'm very glad that uh, you actually brought up the point about uh, nomenclature because it, um, in built age I'm using a radiocarbon um, like name for that, but it's actually um, a broader c category. Um, so <coughs> we already mentioned that models. Um, usually are only partially faithful to what they represent. They may provide approximation of phenomena with a simplification of certain factors whose impact on the model can be estimated. Or models could be idealized. It means that certain features are absent or heavily modified. Obviously, for delivering results, simplification are the only one acceptable as they can be corrected. This is the case for taphonomy studies, stratigraphy, or stratigraphic for confirmation for typology, etc. A second very relevant feature is in the age. Um, <coughs> the event we intend to date is very often not the one our methods afford us to date. An inferential abduction of the distance between the two is crucial to understand the problems associated with the combination of different dating methods. Indeed, it has been done for years to use one date or more dates averaged as a proxy, as a proxy for the date of a context, a layer, or a site. And I believe that some seemingly intricate chronological problems would, would actually benefit from an analysis of their inbuilt date. Finally, the pragmatics of chronology investigate what Clark would have called the controlling models. 
So archaeological controlling concepts influence the selection of practical, particular operational models. And conversely, conversely, the habitual use of particular operational models itself modifies our controlling models. Controlling models are basically uh, the ideas of history, of life, of science, um, and like the intellectual context where we've, we've grown up. Um, for chronology, this uh, mostly idea about time in history, like the zeitgeist, or like uh, teleological and teleological um, idea of history. A second aspect of pragmatics is the, in the investigation of the history of the discipline, which I find particularly fascinating for scientific methods, as, as their history has been narrated mostly as a tale of incremental knowledge. In this narrative, the incremental development of new technology and a progressive understanding of natural phenomena lead to a likewise incremental improvement of the methods themselves. I'm not really questioning the validity of this narrative, but it does look simplistic. We all experience the impact of political and institutional issues like funding, training programs, and, well, traditional ones um, like local communities or ar archaeological sub-disciplines. Uh, so the impact of these different factors on our work. These aspects sure create incentives and disincentives to pick and choose different methods. And they also um, create preferential knowledge so that some branches of the discipline uh, can be more interested on, can rely more on some methods than others. So, um, in conclusion, we can now go back to the initial hypothesis that chronology building is not a dis descriptive task and that it requires interpretation at certain nodes in the chronological chain. It seems to me that this discussion proved the hypothesis to be right and the main places, and allowed us basically to pinpoint the main places in the building of, of arguments where interpretation has a role. So, these nodes are the construction of conceptual units. Let's just think specifically of a historical transition. Uh, when we want to date historical transition, they're normally made of many different uh, units inside them. The definition of sets of analogs, so um, the tolerance boundary for, um, according to which we decide that different artifacts, for example, are analogs. Uh, that's, for, of course, crucial in typology. And in some cases, in built age. So, it, and by in built age, I here I mean the time with the the distance between the time the method allows us to date and the time we want to date, and controlling models um, that generate so our vision of the world that generates preferential knowledge. Thank you very much for your attention.